Imagine a place cut off from the outside world. A place where nothing enters or leaves, or so they say. It would be easy for someone to disappear. Would it also be that easy to wipe the entire slate clean? Imagine a perpetual proxy war, where all sides in the conflict are simply pawns in the wicked game of a selected few elites. Those elites have the power to shape the lives and fates of all involved for profit and also power. With the advent of patch 0.13, we were introduced to Farit Akmandulovich Genatulin, otherwise known as Lightkeeper. They say that he's a specialist in radio and naval electronic devices and resides in the Peninsula Territory on the Lighthouse map. The route to Lightkeeper is mined with claymores and guarded by a shrouded marksman and his team of elite snipers. Only a select few have managed to reach him and those people may be the only ones that even stand a chance of finding out the truth of the Tarkov conflict. They have gone beyond the challenge of the Kappa container and proved themselves worthy of a meeting. Well, sort of. The first contact we learn about with Lightkeeper was from Peacekeeper, who apparently was denied several meetings with him. After discussing the matter with Mechanic, we joined forces to build a transmitter to contact him. He instructs us to build a signal transmitter to disable the mines and let his sniper, Zirachi, know not to shoot us on sight. Upon reaching the previously locked room in the lighthouse, the shutter snaps open and we are allowed to enter the inner sanctum of the lightkeeper. Upon meeting the man himself, he greets us as if he was expecting us, acknowledging that we've passed all his tests. He tells us that he watches over everything and that everyone in Tarkov sees his light. Whether this is a reference to the actual lighthouse or the fact that he's connected to the blue flame talked about by the cult, we don't know. He tells us in Tarkov, he doesn't want to simply survive, but to control the survival. He talks about our potential motive for meeting him being that we want to get close to the one for whom the collapse is the beginning of the new. Our character seems to not catch on too quickly because we ask about escaping from Tarkov, to which she replies, there is no escape. And that we just do not understand, much like him at first. He talks of the pettiness of the traders and the futility of the local fighting in Tarkov, suggesting that the end or the rebirth is near. He says that he's begun to understand once they reached out to him. Beyond this, he has nothing more to say to us right now, but down the line, he offers us quests with more of this storyline. He's convinced that someone is trying to disrupt his operations and asks us to investigate by talking to the local getaway drivers at the vehicle extractions. From this, we learn that one of his teams has gone missing, and after more investigation, it leads him to conclude that Glukar is working against him, as referenced in the Rizzi storyline. He then asks us to kill him and his unit. Beyond this, nothing more yet has been revealed about the Lightkeeper, but we can find a lot of clues to the future of Tarkov in the words that he says. He informs us that there are those above him that he refers to as they, there is speculation here that those shadowy entities could be Terror Group, or indeed even the Cult. In the quest Return the Favour, Lightkeeper asks us to eliminate USEC PMCs around the mountain area in woods. This area, he says, is the site of an underground base and that the orders came from outside the border of the Tarkov blockade. It's my opinion that this is a former Terror Group site guarded by USEC, as referenced in the description for Woods itself, used to experiment with medical and chemical warfare, and that Lightkeeper's contacts outside of Tarkov are indeed the overarching terror group mega corporation. It would make sense that the one who wants to control the survival in Tarkov would also be working directly with the people that instigated the entire conflict. This is just my speculation but it would seem that the conflict has been directly perpetuated by the entities such as Terror Group and Lightkeeper in order to further their own ends, whether that be shady research, money, or simply power and control. 
My own opinion on Lightkeeper and his motivations is that he works directly with Terror Group to control the conflict in Tarkov. They instigate and then manage the conflict, funneling arms and biological materials into the conflict zone, free from any international oversight or accountability. My overall theory about the reasons behind why this is happening is that Tarkov is simply a war economy. A perpetual proxy war fought by covert troops on both sides that officially don't exist in the eyes of international law. The conflict allows arms dealers to trade under the radar and duplicitous businesses and corporations can operate without the threat of legal or moral repercussions. If no one knows about the crimes because there's a blockade and everything coming in and out, then you can probably get away with whatever shady business you're doing. If the rest of the world treats Tarkov the same as they treat the other real world areas, such as the Chernobyl exclusion zone, is it really a stretch to say that the majority of the world may be completely unaware of what's happening in Tarkov? A good example of this in other popular fiction is from Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. A war economy is the central theme in this game, with governments, corporations and PMCs working together to perpetuate a series of worldwide continuous proxy wars in order to ultimately control all information and by extension, all people. In my opinion, Tarkov is no different. The Lightkeeper talks about rebirth and that everyone sees his light. After the revelations on Twitch from Axel and from Nice Guy, we now know that underneath the lighthouse itself is highly radioactive. A huge hermetic door blocks the path ahead, saying it's dangerous. This lines up with our previous research into the blue ice chemical in the chemical quest line and how it killed a friend of skiers. We can strongly infer from this information that the EMP or blue flame referred to by the cultists was in fact some form of nuclear blast. Perhaps this could be, in game law, justification for the reason why we have wipes. The conflict becomes too messy for Lightkeeper and Terror Group to manage, so they simply nuke the place and start again, sending more PMCs into the meat grinder again and again and again. This of course is just speculation, but could provide a reason in the future behind why the game wipes. Whatever the true meaning behind Lightkeeper and his motivations, this story is still developing and has been revealed to us before it was actually meant to be due to glitches and alleged hacking and data mining. What we've seen so far was certainly not meant to be seen just yet and I suspect there is meant to be far more backstory to what we see here. I think it will be quite hard for BSG to develop this lore any differently now considering this info has been leaked ahead of time and they may have already developed more of the Rizzy series which could have provided more backstory to Lightkeeper. Gluhar disrupting his operation is a good example of this, raiding the lab which obviously has something to do with Lightkeeper's operation. Finally, we see some interesting story and some more developments with the escape from Tarkov lore and history. I do, however, feel that most of the law we are seeing has been written fairly recently and is retroactively trying to tie all of these loose threads together. If this is intentional though, there are just too many of these loose ends of story and not enough coherent single stories that really cut through to the root of what Tarkov is and what's happening. But again, we are constantly told that everything we're playing now is merely a side quest to the main story of Tarkov itself. What do you think about the future and the past of Tarkov and the motivations of Lightkeeper? Who is he? Does he really control anything in Tarkov? Let me know in the comments.